massive cooler. This thing looks bad. I mean, it looks cool. No doubt about that. So in this video, we are gonna take this massive heat sink, go ahead and mount it on the Raspberry Pi 4. Um, we're gonna start off with giving you step-by-step -step instructions how to install it, and then if you wanna fast forward, we'll do a temperature test, and then my final remarks with me comparing it. Um, I also do a sound test, and uh, we compare it to liquid cooled and some other coolers and uh, other options on the market. But this, like I said, is pretty cool. Pretty cool heat sink, I must say. Very well packaged, no shaking. All right, inside the box is another little box. Okay, wow, cool. So we got our screws, and look, it has two kits in here. You have this one for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and 3B. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. And then over here you have it for the Raspberry Pi 4. Now the screwdriver is only in the 3B Plus one, which is fine. You just grab the screwdriver over it. That's the one you're gonna need. And then you have some riser plates and some mounting points. You also have some little heat sink cushions. I believe those are. So I'm gonna get rid of the Raspberry Pi 3B. I think most of you are interested in the four. Inside the box, you have the fan. If I were you, I would probably buy some heat sink paste if you really want to go big on this. Um, but here it is. The fan does have an LED light on it. It will run off the power source of your Pi on the GPIOs. Um, you just got to plug it into the correct spots. And then we have the mounting plates and then instructions here. This is, the instructions are not gonna be perfect English as this company, I believe, is in China or somewhere else outside the US. And then it has a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus instructions. Okay, it's saying to install, you have a number one and number two bracket, okay? Should be etched on here. The one with the big L on the bottom is one, the other one is a two. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus for now. It says to install bracket one onto the side of the, the side without the fan. So there's the side without the fan, the side is with the fan. You notice you have two screw holes on the bottom. You have a little screw hole right there on the bottom. And you have a screw hole right there on the bottom. And they're saying attach the number one plate to the screw hole. All right, so I messed this up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back in the video here. And basically, these go on the top. So they need to be, I don't think, I, I think I have to take it off all the way. But what happened, a little lesson. So a lesson for you all is that on these brackets, I had them on the correct side but you want the little half circle facing down. I had the half circle facing up. Um, the other thing you can check for this is if you'll notice, the Pi 4 logo on these little arms, these two arms, should be facing up. The etch, they laser etch the word Pi 4B. And I'm assuming that's the same on the Raspberry Pi 3B is they etched Pi 3B plus. Go ahead and make sure that the laser etching is facing up. You can read it when it's on the Pi. So you can see here, I've correctly installed this side. This side I did incorrectly. I see it's too low too, okay? So this one I need to flip around 180 degrees. See the etching of the word Pi 4B? That needs to go on the other side. All right, I now connected these two pieces correctly. The next thing you do is you get your brass grommets and your nuts. Brass grommets go toward the bottom as they're the spacers to fit on here. So just a nut, brass grommet, four of those. I put on my thermal paste. Next up is the fan goes away from the GPIO pins. These are your GPIO pins on the left where the, where the LAN is. And then this is the fan. The fan faces the opposite direction. And it should, if this all lines up correctly, just fit right on there. There you go. So let me go ahead and finish mounting this up. But you can still get to your power over ethernet. You can still get to your display port. The camera port, you could still actually get to it if you really needed to. All this you can get to, all that you can get to. Um, so now comes the finishing 
step or really close to the end, which is just screwing in from the bottom of the board to the brackets. So you're gonna use your other M2, the M2 screws, the ones with a bigger head on it, and then you're just gonna screw all these in. You have four to go. I would not tighten them all at the same time. I'd kind of loosely tighten all four. And then the last two things to do is just plug in your fan. The red should go first and the black should go second. I think I can get this all to work. Yeah, they, they have it like this swiveling around. I think red goes first and then you skip over one and then it's black. On the GPIO pins closest to the edge, you have the red in the bottom right hand corner. You skip over a pin and then the black. It's all on the row closest to me, closest to the camera. And then there you have it. You can still get to everything. It lights up blue when it's on. And there it is. Massive cooler. This thing looks bad. I mean, it looks cool. No doubt about that. That is a cool looking heatsink. Look at this monstrosity. Crazy. All right, let's take some temps. All right, so here we are in my garage with it running. You can see the fan spinning. As far as noise, I mean, my cell phone's right touching it at this point. Okay. That's my cell phone. And it's very quiet, all things considered. So, pretty cool. Let's see if we can get that angle really quick. All right, so currently at 32, 33 degrees Celsius. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and run the test. 37, wow. That's really good. And then it's actually getting lower again. That's crazy. Let's do it again. All right. There you have it, 39, 38, 37, 41. Let's see if we can get a little higher. Um, remember when I did the dual fan, the highest I got was 41. But you can really tell how fast it cools off. Like, yeah, I got 39 degrees, but look how fast it was to jump down to 37. And if I waited a few more seconds, you know, or even a minute, it would have been back down to 34, 33 or lower. 39, it's not breaking 39. Should go back down to 37 here. Oh, okay. there you go. See, and it's just going back down. 39, okay, it's kind of oscillating. But that's really impressive for sure. So in conclusion, this thing definitely performs. I highly recommend it over liquid cooling your Raspberry Pi and it does a really good job. And not only are these numbers peak, but they will go down significantly as you play. I was simply stressing testing this thing out. I can highly recommend this. Now I understand there's been an update to um, the operating system to make the temperatures on the Raspberry Pi 4 lower, but I didn't do that for this video because my past video was on the same version of the operating system, so I didn't want to dilute the numbers. So therefore, I can highly recommend this, but do know it's huge. This is a big heatsink fan, but it works. And so if you want extreme cooling, I can definitely recommend this product. As I show you here, explaining computers did a similar test on the Raspberry Pi 3B or B+, one of the old threes. And um, the four runs a lot hotter than that, but I'm seeing similar results that he had with his crazy extreme fan plus heatsink setup. But this is way cheaper. There's a kit for it. It fits correctly. You don't have to hot glue anything or get it crazy at all. Uh, I can vouch for the craftsmanship. It works. It looks pretty. It's a good conversation piece. It's not for everyone, but if if you were wondering, like, hey, is this thing real or is this just like a, you know, is this like an April Fool's thing? No, it's real. It works. It works for both 3B plus and the 4, 4B. If you're leaving your pile on for a really long time, I would look no further. Um, if you want to spend something a little cheaper, there's that dual fan that I showed you in the past video, which once they get that fitting on a Raspberry Pi 4, that would also be an option that I would consider. But uh, there you go. Let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.